All right, the objective of this video is to use FDE and SED in a sentence as many times as possible to really internalize these acronyms. You see a lot of CompTIA tests are so much about acronym knowledge. This actually comes from the objective 3.3, but if you found yourself on this video just because you want to learn about full disk encryption or self-encrypting devices, then I hope you like this question and answer approach. All right, so our resource comes from a website called winmagic.com. The headline up here though reads Secure Speak Win Magic Data Security Blog. Data security is of particular interest to me. In my last blog on computer forensics, I addressed the question does software software for disk encryption thwart computer forensics? emphasis on the software because that's the difference between SFDE and SED. Sort of. I'm sure self-encrypting drives have some sort of software component that gets it to start self-encrypting. But you can have any old drive, I assume, and you can then download a software program to make this happen. So, to recap, he says, oh, and I should give credit to the author, Gary McCracken here, and this is an older article, 2014. But to recap, a software encrypted device could prevent effective forensics. However, if you have enterprise key management and forensic software that can interface with it to get the media encryption key, Mac, then it doesn't have to be any more challenging than doing forensics on an unencrypted drive. So here's a good question. What's the key to getting the key? Answer, having the forensic software that can interface with the drive to get this media encryption key. And this media encryption key right here gets us our first picture of the lesson. Because in Thor Ragnarok, this little guy is called Mech. I think it's with an I though, not just M-E-K, but M-I-E-K. But the point to remembering what Mech is and the key to getting a key, the key to remembering this is thinking of that picture right there. At least that's how my brain works. So for what about forensics and self-encrypting drives? Is that a problem? Well, it can be. There is no TCG OPL command to extract the mech from a SED, so it cannot be backed up. This makes me think uh, SEDs, SEDs, not SED and OCK from Linux, but SEDs are stronger, I think. He continues by saying, unlike software FDE, if a crypto erase is performed on a SED, the mech is regenerated and the data is gone forever. This, of course, is a problem for forensics, but exactly what most want when the, they crypto erase a drive. So I guess it depends on the scenario if that's a good or bad thing. Well, the more common use case is that the said is seized from the user, but the drive is locked, and there's a 128 megabyte MBR shadow that is in plain text, but the rest of the drive looks like it has no data on it. Never heard of this term, though, so what is an MBR shadow? Master boot record is what I assume that stands for. Well, moving on, all LBAs, that is logical block addresses, above 128 megs, I assume, appear to have only zeros as data. In a standalone system, if the user doesn't give the forensics examiner his password, then the examiner is out of luck. All they see is a blank drive. However, with enterprise key management, the said authentication credentials are stored in a secure central database. So I ask, where is the key to said stored? And apparently it's in a central database, which makes me think that's not as secure as the person wants who is purchasing whatever said they're purchasing. Well, with proper well, with proper authorization, the forensic examiner can retrieve the credentials and unlock the drive. The reason why, that should be why, I refer to a key management system which takes care of their credentials is because the said credentials can be 256-bit random numbers and have the same strength as an AES 256-bit key, so that's pretty strong. Now he says all of this is good in theory, but said's are relatively new compared to software FDE and forensic software has not had knowledge of SEDs built into it. In my last blog on forensics, I noted that guidance software, which is the leader in forensic software, that might be a good brand name to remember. Who's the leader in forensic software? That is guidance software. 
Well, they added Secure Doc support to the 64-bit version of Incase, with more enhancements to come next year. Well, in the winter months together, we tackled the problem of enabling forensics on WinMagic managed SEDs. The solution is somewhat similar to Software FDE, with a significant exception. Once Incase unlocks the SED, the fact that the underlying SED is encrypted is completely transparent to everyone, even Incase. Alright, let's read the last paragraph, then we'll go look at what Incase is. He writes, WinMagic and Guidance jointly demonstrated in-case unlocking a WinMagic managed said at the Computer and Enterprise Investigations Conference. It was well received, although SEDs are still new to some. I expect that the upcoming release of in-case this summer will include the enhancement demonstrated at this Computer and Enterprise Investigations Conference. From my perspective, this is another step towards the ecosystem fully supporting SEDs and them eventually becoming ubiquitous. So maybe we could finish on an opinionated answer here. What's better, FDE or SED? This guy, Gary McCracken, is apparently saying SEDs are. Let's look up what NCASE is real quick. Going to the guidancesoftware.com website. But let's click this Y. Alright, that was just a commercial for guidance software in general. All right, here we go. The Wikipedia page should give us what we need, which is just the basics. So it's basically a suite of digital investigation products. So it's multiple software products. All right, well, that's it. Walking into the test now, you should probably understand these two acronyms a bit better.